Let's switch gears, go to the NBA. Game six of the Nuggets taking on the Spurs. San Antonio was looking to send the series to a decisive game seven. But Marcus Aldridge, he went off in the first half, setting the tone for the team in the mid-range and finished with, an eight, with 18 in the first half. The Spurs shot 69% from mid-range on Thursday. That is the best by a team in the last 20 postseasons. San Antonio with the lead by four at the half. Over to the third quarter now, the Nuggets were down by six. Nikola Jokic, keep an eye on him, getting the pass. Hits the three, making it look so easy. And later in the third, here's Jokic once again driving and making the running layup. Still in the third, fighting in the pain and getting the tough layup. He finished with 43 points, 12 rebounds, and 9 assists. He takes a seat with 103 left in the third quarter, and the Nuggets down just three points. A move the Spurs would capitalize on. DeMar DeRozan driving, getting the layup to go. Spurs up by five, then in the fourth, Rudy Gay. Hits the corner three. Spurs go up by eight. Now we have an 11-point game. Derek White pulling up. He gets the friendly roll on the jumper. So the Spurs go on a 12-2 run. Here's Coach Michael Malone on Jokic. Every time we take him out, it seems like the Spurs go on a run. Um, so he's an MVP candidate, in my opinion, for a reason. And every time we take him out, obviously, it's like you're holding your breath that we can hold on until we get him back in the game. All right, so under four to play, Spurs up by 18. DeRozan getting the pass, sitting the jumper. He finished with 25 points, seven rebounds, and seven assists. Spurs go on to win 120-103, to 103, forcing a game seven. So this is the 6-2-7 series to go to a game seven. Good news for the Nuggets. The previous five were all won by the two seed. It'll be the fourth game seven in Denver history and the first for the Nuggets since 2012. Now to the bad news. They haven't won a game since a game seven since 1978. Gets for you. Warriors and Clippers as we move to the NBA. How many first round picks do they have? Well, the Warriors have 10 guys who were taken to the first round. Double that of the Clippers. And have five more players drafted in the top 10. The only guy on LA's roster who is a top 10 draft pick, Danilo Gallinari. Might hang with them sometime. Disparity in talent or not, the Clippers have surprisingly forced a game six tonight at home. Staples Center not exactly kind to the Clips. L.A. in a similar position last week. After winning game two on the road to tie the series at 1-1, but drop the next two in L.A. Hey, speaking of top picks. With the first pick in the 2014 WNBA draft, the Connecticut Sun select Chene Abumake from Stanford University. <laughs> I don't have the jersey to hand you. Oh no, Commissioner. Can we get a shake? Hump. Yes. Thank handshake. You. Handshake. We have our own first pick with Chanae Wu McKay, 2014 first overall pick of the Connecticut Sun. Janine, what is it like to hear your name, the clapping, the cheering, everything? It's a cliche, but it's really like your dreams just came true. I remember I kind of blacked out. It was so exciting, and I was like, oh my goodness, and my sister was right to the next to me. She was drafted number one herself. I worked so hard for that moment, and it was here in the great state of Connecticut, actually, <laughs> ironically. <laughs> yeah, number one overall. We heard some of the players say it last night. In fact, when their name is called, and they're talking to the, the, the president of the GM or the head coach of the team, yep. they do black out because they're trying to get all this figured out. Yep. Uh, let's figure out game six tonight between the Clippers and Warriors. I don't know if anybody's concerned, but there is reason for pause. What did you see out of the Warriors in game five that perhaps made you take a step back a little bit and, and, and take notice? Well, we all know what the Warriors can do offensively, but where they really need to step it up is defensively because right now they're 11th out of 16 teams in the postseason in defensive rating, and that's very unusual for the Warriors. But there were a couple plays that I saw where defensively they really were not their best. Uh, we all know what the Warriors can do, but look at this play. They're usually an excellent help side team, but Kevon Looney hesitates Tate allows a layup. All right, next play. Here there's a twist screen action, and Clay goes too far under the screen, allowing Montrez Harrell to get a good look, even though there are four defenders in the paint. Next, not enough good defensive energy here from Draymond Green. All it took was a hezzy dribble for Lou to get the easy layup. And then check this out right here. This is a play that I was like, whoa. Nice brush screen to get Iggy out of the play. Advantage Clippers. KD will bite again on Lou Will's hesitation move. Lou draws two and Montrez Harrell with another good look at the basket. The Warriors just were not connected. They were not locked in defensively. And there's a saying from the late great Pat Summit: Offense sells tickets. 
Defense wins games. Yeah. Rebounding wins championships. Rebounding is the ultimate version of completing a defensive possession. And the only player for both teams that was in double figures in rebounding last game, game five, Patrick Beverly, 14 rebounds, double anyone else. How bad do you want it? Defensively, that's where it shows with rebounding. The Warriors will have to play defense to get back on track. Number one back in your draft, always number one in our hearts today. Oh. McKay with us this morning. I'm getting morning. the same tears. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just took you number one. The NBA playoffs continue tonight. 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, ESPN of the ESPN app. After the Clippers, big game five, one of the Oracle dubs. Look, need to close this thing out. They're hanging around. NBA countdown gets to start at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN2. The Spurs have forced a Game 7. They took care of business in Game 6 at home against Denver. LaMarcus Aldridge was gigantic in this game. Aldridge, 10 of 18 from the floor. There's the 1-3 he hit on three tries, 26 points and 10 rebounds. Just really setting the tone early for San Antonio. Let's check out Aldridge by Nugget Defenders. Jokic, who was gigantic offensively, 43 points and 12 rebounds. But Aldridge played well against him, nine points on three of six shooting with Jokic as the primary defender. Let's throw a little Smoky Mountain rain at him now, Paul Millsap. Mm -hmm. But again, Aldridge, five of seven. That was an easy cover for him. Great move there off the dribble. 13 points against Millsap as his primary defender. Again, 26 points in all. The Spurs force game seven. Aldridge led all scores in the first half with 18, helping the Spurs force that game seven. That is in Denver Saturday night. He was five for five on pull-ups in game six. He had that many makes on pull-ups in their first five games of the series. Tim Lagler, legs, cook something up in that lab of yours. Well, any team facing elimination on its home floor is going to need a big night out of its best players. And I thought San Antonio knew that going in. So LaMarcus Aldridge took it upon himself to be very aggressive at the start of this game. And when your best player gets going early offensively, it allows your role players to relax, stay in their lane, and have a big impact as well. And I'll show you what I mean with LaMarcus early in the game. This is one of his very first touches inside of a minute. And you see DeMar DeRozan, nice job facilitating. As he starts to turn the corner, he's reading the weak side of the defense. We're staying close enough to shooters so they're not in his lap. You've got Paul Millsap down on the baseline. He's got to deal with Pirtle down here. And Nikola Jokic is the guy that elects to come off of Aldridge, figuring he's not a three-point shooter, so I'm going to get in the lap of DeMar DeRozan, and he's going to basically force this pass. The question is, what do you do on a closeout? Nice pump fake right here. You see Paul Millsap, too aggressive with the closeout allows the Marcus Aldridge to get to the baseline and then elevate. 6'11", pull-up jumper. This tells everybody in the building he's in a good place. He's feeling aggressive, feeling very confident. Got them off to a good start. And then he got to his sweet spot in the second half. This is a key stretch when they got some separation, late third, early fourth quarter. He, again, eyeing up the defense. I personally would see a, like to see a double team right here and close out to the non-shooter DeRozan. But instead, they elect to stay home and now... You're going to allow LaMarcus Aldridge an opportunity to operate one-on-one -on -one in his favorite place on the court, and he's going to dip, spin, and elevate. And Nikola Jokic plays it pretty well, but LaMarcus Aldridge knows there's no way he's athletic enough to get up and honestly contest this. So the fadeaway jumper is exactly what Aldridge wants. Big night for him in both halves. DeRozan better in the second. Bottom line is the veterans came through for San Antonio, and now you've got a game seven back in Denver. Nuggets, well, one win away from their first playoff series win since the 2009 Conference Semis. They've lost five straight playoff series entering this season. Big night for the franchise. Marcus Aldridge going off in the first half. The Spurs shot 69% from wow. mid-range on Thursday. That's best by a team in the last 20 postseason. The mid-range, of course, is dying. It's all about threes, especially corner threes. Yes. And the layup and the free throw. That, that's basketball nowadays. Like that. There's your efficient three-pointer from Jokic. There he is with the floater. He was outstanding in this game. He had 43 points, 12 rebounds, and nine assists. He takes a seat with 63 seconds left in the third. Nuggets are only down by three. But from there, the Spurs would capitalize with a big man on the bench. DeRozan drives and gets the layup to go. 
Spurs by five. There's that corner three. It's shorter than the other threes, just 22 feet. Bellinelli, Spurs by 11, so here they go. Again, it was a three-point lead at the end of the third, late in the third. Derek White, it's a 12-2 run with that dude on the bench. Michael Malone, Denver coach, what's up? 43 points, 12 rebounds, nine assists in 38 minutes. And, um, you know, maybe after playing 48, you know, it's like every time we take him out, it seems like the Spurs go on a run. Um, so he's an MVP candidate, in my opinion, for a reason. And every time we take him out, obviously, it's like you're holding your breath that we can hold on until we get him back in the game. Yeah, so game seven, you're not coming out one fiver. <laughs> right. DeRozan, 25 points, seven rebounds, seven assists, and pop. I call him pop. You do call him pop. And the Spurs force a game seven in Denver. You're back against the wall. You know, it's, it's literally win or go home. You know, um, win or go home. Simple as that. You know, once you understand the meaning of that going into that game, you understand that every single second on that court matters. You know, you don't want to walk off that court preparing for summer. You know, um, that's, that's, it brings out a different side of you, you know, and the guys that have been in the game seven understand what it's like. So we all got to treat it like, like we did the night. Greg Popovich continues to climb up the uh, most playoff wins list. A win in game seven on Saturday night would tie him with Pat Riley for second most. Still a ways back from Phil Jackson. The Jack Show. Popovich is three and three all time in game sevens. Alternating wins and losses. It's then worth noting he and the Spurs lost their last game seven in the first round four years ago against the Clippers. Coming up later, Tim Legler. The beaker is out. The lab is open. How the Spurs force game seven, the smartest man on television via basketball.